the oil exploration commenced in Ibaji as far back as 1952 in the villages of Odeke, El Chono, Ihile, Anocha, Uchuchu, Omabo, Ika, Iregu, and Uje, all in Ibaji community of the present day Ibaji local government area of Fiji State, by three oil companies, namely Shell BP, now SPDC, Elf, now Total Elfina, and Agit Energy. Aware that the companies collectively drilled 25 exploration wells, two appraisal wells, and eight core drill wells in the entire Anambra Basin, out of which majority of the wells fall to Kogi State, as these states were made possible through a letter to the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, by the former manager drilling NPDC engineer Sam A. Uchola, and dated 21st November 2003. Further informed that the exploration of oil activities in Kogi State and part of Anambra Basin was later abandoned until 18th of July 2001, when the executive governor of Kogi State, late Prince Abubakar Audu, wrote to the group managing director of NNPC, Abuja, to remind him of earlier discovery of crude oil at Odeke, a channel, and Anocha communities in the Baji local government of Kogi State. Note that as a follow-up to this call, on 25th July 2001, a team of geoscientists and engineers were drafted to the area to carry out a very preliminary investigation on the claims of Kogi State government and the resuscitation of these productive power wells in the area, among other areas, prompted the granting of oil license, now known as Oil Prospecting Licenses, OPL 915 and 916 to an indigenous oil company known as, known as Oriel Petroleum Resources, PLC. <clears throat> Concerned that oil, Oriel Petroleum Resources, PLC, has been taking crude from OPL 915 since 2012 till date, and the percentages of crude oil in OPL 915 among the three contesting states are as follows. Kogi State, 53%. Anambra, 23%. Enugu, 17%. And Edo State, 7%. Regrets that there has been no drilling activity from the OPL 916, which jointly belongs to Kogi, Anambra, and Delta States while Orient Petroleum has fully drilled four oil wells at OPL 915. That is wells one, two, three, and four, with three and four incontrovertibly located in Ibaji, in Kogi State, accounting for 53% of the crew. Note that consequent upon this, Orient Petroleum Resources made three offers to Kogi State government when the company arrived on the scene for exploration activities. And these details are that the government of Kogi State should appoint a liaison officer to act as intermediary between the government and the company. That the government of Kogi State should allocate the land to her to use as her depot. And that the government of Kogi State should buy a share of at least 500 million in the company. Further notes that even though Kogi State government has not taken up shares, the company confirmed in its official website that the Kogi State government has granted the other two requests of appointment of liaison officer and land allocation. 
Whereas the Senate may wish to know that the operational base of the oil company was in a channel and had been there before the hostility in the disputed area, which points to the fact that the disputed area belongs to Kogi State. Worried that since the granting of the prospecting license to Orient Petroleum, there have been increased tension between and among the communities that have any direct or tangential con contiguity with the location of the oil wells. Further note that President Goodluck Jonathan had, while commissioning the Orient Petroleum Resources Refinery located in Unsube, Anabra State, on August 30, 2012, without due process, proclaimed Anambra State as an oil producing state. Concerned that when the attention of the then president was drawn to his official misrepresentation, he convened a round table on the issue, and after each claimant had made submissions, he directed the National Boundary Commission to demarcate the boundaries of the oil fields as due to the various communities. Senate accordingly resolves to one, urge the federal government to declare Kogi State as an oil producing state with all benefits and privileges. Urge the governors of the three states of Anambra, Enugu, and Kogi to resolve the crisis between the various communities. Urge the federal government to direct the National Boundary Commission to immediately release its report on the determination of the boundaries of the communities contiguous to OPLs 915 and 916. Urge the communities of Ibaji, Iga, and Aguleri Otu of Kogi, Enugu, and Ambra states to sheet their source and allow peace to reign while the National Boundary Commission delineates the correct boundaries. Urge the federal government to ensure that the displaced communities in the disputed area, as a result of hostilities, are allowed to return to their ancestral homes with compensation to the affected communities that have lost lives and properties due to the crisis. Direct the Senate Committee on Petroleum Downstream, National Security and Intelligence, to ensure compliance with prayers one, two, three, four, and five. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, <clears throat> you are all aware that government is determined to drastically increase our crude reserve. That is why concerted effort is being made to discover oil in many parts of the country today. Giving recognition to communities where oil is being produced will not only lower the cost of extraction because of absence of strife and crisis, it will also have a ripple effect on new discoveries. Besides, the communities will encourage the oil companies to invest in more extraction, which will raise daily production rate, meaning more inflow. I hasten to point out, Mr. President, that the fact that giving recognition to one oil community does not preclude recognizing other producing communities. In fact, recognizing an oil producing community will bring equity into play, like what is good for the goose is good for the gander. My contention, Mr. Uh, President, my dear colleagues, is that every oil producing community should be recognized and should not be dependent on recognizing the other as every community that satisfies the criteria should be recognized. Having said that, I want to thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity to bring this all-important motion up. And I thank my distinguished colleagues for your patience, and I urge you all to support this motion without a single dissent. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, my colleagues. With this motion brought by my friend, uh, a vice marshal, uh, uh, that uh, I vice marshal Alpha that Kogi should be declared as oil producing state. Mr. President, I sympathize with my colleague in the first place because uh, 
this constituency, which he is representing now, have had uh, three senators in the life of this. Uh, 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 three senators. Yes, three. He was the second. After he could sec uh, uh, the third. Then after he went, he came back. But the first uh, couldn't come back. And uh, with, during the pendency of uh, this movement of these three senators from this uh, central district, this issue has been concluded, and uh, this city handled it with Stella Odua, who is officially not here, and, and Yuba, that, was, uh, that, that is here today. We agreed that uh, instead of uh, dissipating energy and uh, quarreling amongst ourselves, that the three states should combine together and make a, a, a common presentation on a common front that the three states should be declared oil producing. You know, and uh, the percentage worked out because we were worried when Lagos, who the Lagos state was declared oil producing, but we started before them. So we were worried and we brought this issue here. And after the, the deliberation of these issues, well, the, this Senate directed the Senate Committee upstream. Uh, Senator Alasha uh, there, to look into this thing with the Boundary Commission with a view to coming to inform us so that uh, the, uh, we will be, direct, we will be uh, solving a problem instead of uh, just recreating trouble here and there and then causing confusion at home. I also understand my colleague uh, hasn't, having come back, we want to take something home. No. You know, the, the people, they have people to show, see that it's working very hard. That's understand, uh, understandable. But the issue is that the committee on upstream is still handling this issue. And they should finish and get, get back to the city so that we will not be coming to their form with only, uh, this same motion. The next time uh, Stella Odua will come with this same issue, the, uh, maybe the Ninth Assembly, another person from Kogi from that constituency, will still come back and we continue, you know, uh, dissipating energy here. So, I, uh, Mr. President, I am of the opinion that uh, this uh, uh, bill I mean, this uh, motion brought by my colleague should be a step down and allow a large shadow committee to give us a, a response to this issue so that uh, we won't have any trouble in the, among the three states. We already have had enough trouble. We don't want to continue having trouble again. Thank you so much. Yep. No, I'm not there. There's a party. <laughs> that is this is constituency that's um, the interested uh, constituency. I'm just speaking as a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, if you look at our cost list for today, it's very, very heavy. And I think that we we'll do ourselves a, well of, uh, a world of good if we advise our friend and colleague that offer to humbly withdraw the motion so that uh, we can look at other issues in our other cost list. I would like to associate myself with the earlier submission of uh, Senator Otazi. This matter have been visited, and I had expected him to either speak to Senator Dino, who is a more experienced senator, and who has been here for a long time, to get proper guidance, or even seek the, the, the guidance of the Rules and Business Committee on what has happened in respect of this matter before now. But the truth of the matter is that even if we had not even discussed the matter, we cannot by any stroke of imagination come up with a motion to declare this state or you produce it. Otherwise, we would have, one day we'll wake up and say that the whole of Nigeria are already produced. It doesn't work, work that way. So I just want to appeal to my colleague that if he pleases him to formally withdraw the motion so that we can go into um, other areas. Because as it is now, there's nothing we can do. Even by his own admission, at the body of his motion, he said that the matter is being, dealt with, but it's being handled by the Boundary Commission. And until that happens, there's nothing we can do here. We're not taking over the job of the Boundary Commission. So this has to be settled. So instead of us getting involved in the business of other agencies, we have enough work in this parliament to do. So I just want to appeal to him uh, to save us the energy and time by withdrawing the motion. Uh, leader. Uh, I want to suggest that um, our committee on boundary uh, states and local governments should be able to initiate, if it hasn't done so already, the process of getting the Boundary Commission to demarcate these areas so that we, we don't have to talk about this even in the next uh, Senate. Let, let the proper action and procedure be taken. I think we okay. Distinguished distinguish meet with um, Senator uh, Alashadra and consult others.
and then, uh, if need be, uh, bring back the motion. Hmm? Saint Alpha, I'm waiting for your opinion. With your permission, I have made a motion. I'm not ready to withdraw it. The Senate can go ahead and shoot it down if it wants. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Lashadra. Uh, my name is Senator Tayo Alashadra, representing Nondo Central Senatorial District of Ondo State. Uh, as uh, Senator Utasi said, this, this matter had been referred to the Committee on Petroleum Resources Upstream. We have sat twice. We had linked up with uh, the Boundary Commission, and if not for the activities of the last election, maybe by now our report will have been ready. So I will plead with uh, this Senate to please give us two weeks for us to submit our report to the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Yes, Senator Jensen. Out. Mr. President, the mood of the Senate is very clear. And like uh, Senator, the Deputy Senate, uh, Senate President pointed out, uh, time is of the essence. We have a loaded, we have a loaded uh, other, paper. other paper with so many very important issues for us. So since the mood, the, the thing is very clear, I think I will urge you, Mr. President, to put the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. So we've taken uh, comments. I'll just take one more, then we'll go to prayers. Yes, Senator Ndume. We have provided the necessary advice and comments, but there's one silent point that we are ignoring. And that is the communal clashes that borders on security in that community. While I appreciate the concern of Air Vice Marshal, there is the need, I think, for this Senate to constitute a committee or a delegation to calm down the nerves of the community so that these clashes where you have displaced persons will not continue while assuring them <coughs> that this <coughs> excuse me that this senate is looking into the matter so that the people will stay in peace pending the outcome of the committee and the like that is senator magnus yeah. i want to say sir that i am completely opposed to this motion if it's the issue of communal crisis and security that is a separate issue but if it's the issue of declaring any state an oil-producing state, this Senate has no such power. Section 162 of our Constitution is very, very clear. It says, and I read in sub 2, the President, upon receipt of the advice from the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, shall table before the National Assembly proposals for revenue allocation from the Federation account. In determining the formula, the National Assembly shall take into account allocation principles, especially those of population, equality of states, internal revenue generation, land mass, terrain, as well as population density. It goes further to say, Mr. President, and this is the crux of the matter, provided that the principle of derivation shall be constantly reflected in any approved formula as being not less than 13% of the revenue accruing to the Federation account directly from any natural resource. In this entire motion, my distinguished colleague and brother from Kogi State has failed to tell the people of Nigeria how much has been paid into the Federation account from Kogi State that will entitle them to the 13% of that contribution they have made. Without that figure, no declaration by the Senate that Kogi is an oil producing state will entitle them to anything. Secondly, sir, secondly, sir, to say that the procedure by which a state becomes oil producing 
is not the same procedure as saying oil possessing. They may be an oil possessing state, but they have not contributed to the revenue of this country from oil. When they do that, they will become an oil producing state. So if there are issues of security and all that, we can take that. But this issue of oil producing cannot be decided on the floor of this Senate by motion. It has to be decided by contribution to the Federation account. That is my point. Thank you. Prayer one. All the federal benefits and privileges. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Aye. The nays have it. Urge the governors of the three states, Anambra, Enugu, and Kogi, to resolve the crisis between the various communities. Those in favor of the prayer say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Urge the federal government to direct the National Boundary Commission to immediately release its report on the determination of the boundaries of the communities continuous to OPL 915 and 916. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Prayer for all the communities of Ibaji, Iga, and Aguleri out of Kogi, Enugu, and Anambra State to sheathe their sword and allow peace to reign while the National Boundary Commission delineate the correct boundaries. Those in favor of prayer for say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes are big. Urge the federal government to ensure that the displaced communities in the disputed area due to hostilities are allowed to return to their ancestral homes and compensated for their loss due to the crisis. Those in favor of prayer five say aye. aye. Those against say nay. There is a bit. And prayer six, direct the Senate Committee on Petroleum Downstream National Security and Intelligence to ensure compliance with prayers one, two, three, four, and five. Yes, amendment leader. Mr. President.